Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I'm gonna show you two disappointing orchids. This is a very rare sight for me because I do actually have the orchids that I like most. And up until now, I didn't feel the need to give some of these orchids up or give them away, except for a few years ago when I gave up a lot of my fells due to lack of space. I was, I was overdoing it with Phalaenopsis three years ago. So I kind of donated pretty much all of them. But ever since I didn't really have something I seriously didn't like, to the point of me actually considering giving them away until today. It just so happens I have two of them. So let me show you who I'm talking about. The first one is my Cavia Intermedia variety Aquini and I think you can see what's going on here. Now the Aquini is actually a peloric orchid. The splash Cattleyas are actually pelorics. However though the gene is a little bit more stable than in the case of the Phalaenopsis let's say. And also these hybrids or varieties or strains have been selected and multiplied further in cultivation by humans in accordance to their appearance. Therefore, particular mutations or peloria traits have been kept and some have been discarded. Well, in the case of my Aquini here, we are dealing with a peloria which I personally dislike. And I think you find it very, very similar to those phalaenopsis and flower shops that just seem to not open completely. Those are peloric as well and they suffer from the very same type of peloria as my Intermedia Aquini here. Normally, the Aquini looks like so. And I've actually had this plant in bloom before. You will see on the screen how this orchid looked like. As you can see, I had two flowers there. One seemed to have opened completely. It looked wonderful. I actually love the colors, the shape of this orchid, the contrast. I'm a sucker for contrasts, and one of the flowers looked really great. The other flower, though, looked like it didn't completely open. And at the time, I was a little bit afraid it was this peloric trait which was messing up with the display. Coincidentally, it happened that the flower pollinated itself mechanically. There are orchids in cultivation, and I think the Hercoglossum is one of them, which mechanically pollinate themselves. So flowers don't really last all that long. Cattleyas are not known to do this, but sometimes it happens. So back then, I thought, well, the flower didn't open completely because it pollinated. So it completely aborted opening up. The flower faded pretty fast and then the seed pod started to swell up. And I will link you down below to a few videos I made on the circuit, on the seed pod, on the presentation and so on. So I was slightly relieved because it meant the peloric trait that I personally like the least was not the culprit of the flower opening up. Well, I'm having second thoughts. So here we have my Aquini in bloom once again, and this time she did not pollinate herself. This has been in bloom for four days already. The flower does not want to open more than this, and there is no sign that the flower will fade away anytime soon. I also see the pollen inside, and by the looks of it, I don't think history repeated, I don't think she pollinated herself. I think what happened then was the result of the peloria. Since it is a physical peloria, it determined physical responses, right? Well, I'm afraid my little intermedia has an unstable peloria gene, which should have been bred out, I think. I have never seen the intermedia do this, but sometimes when you propagate orchids through seeds, you can get individuals which have a little bit of a mutation. Now, needless to say, I am disappointed, not because this orchid is at fault or anything. It's just a personal preference. I would have really preferred this orchid to be like so. I wanted to see this beautiful coloration, this beautiful contrast, and when it's closed like this, I don't see anything. And this uh, particular shape of the flower and display, you know, it's not to my liking. However, though, it might be that this orchid is slightly stressed. Well, it's not really stressed, but I let the seed pot develop so I can film it, and it took a toll. It took a lot of energy from this orchid, and the pseudobulb it created is kinda small. So I'm willing to give this orchid another chance, another go. I think I'm just going to cut this flower, repot the orchid and make sure she gets all the nutrients and all the stress-free life that she deserves. And if she blooms again like this, then absolutely she will be up for grabs. I'm going to donate her because just because I don't like it doesn't mean there's something wrong with the orchid. Somebody I'm sure will like it and will want to have it. So definitely she will be included in the giveaway, one of the giveaways, of course. I just want to give it another chance. I really love this orchid and the colors. I just don't like this display. 
So yeah, there we go. That's the first disappointing orchid. The second disappointing orchid, surprise, surprise, is a Vanda. You'll never guess what this Vanda is supposed to be. This is the Ascacenda orange spotted cat or Fuchs orange, whatever. I purchased it one year ago uh, from Catacetum 2. And the only reason why I purchased it was the colors. If you remember back then, I told you I always, always, ever since I started to collect orchids, I always wanted an orange Vanda. Even if it was an Ascacenda with smaller blooms, I wanted it. My best orchid friend at the time, Cora, she had a orange Ascacenda. She was very lucky to find it in a flower shop. I always wanted one for myself. You know me, I love warm colors. I love orange and red on orchids. So I was just so, so happy that I found that particular variety for sale. And it's beautiful. It's actually a very vigorous, very healthy looking Vanda orchid. She's mature, she's big. And this year she actually produced two flower spikes. You see, I have one in the back there. She is in perfect condition, tip top condition. However, it's not what it's supposed to be. And um, you can clearly see it is not orange. What it is, I did not try to identify just yet. I have some, some leads, let's say. I'm disappointed because I really, really, really wanted to have an orange Vanda. And one year I cared for this orchid and I hoped it would bloom. And when I saw the two flower spikes, I was just thrilled that I would have my first orange Vanda in bloom. You know, it's just one of those obsessions that I always had. And behold, it opens and wah wah. Now I'm not saying this orchid is not pretty, she is. It's not to my liking though. Um, if I would see this orchid for sale, I wouldn't go for it. I wouldn't purchase it. First of all, the flowers are tiny, given they didn't open completely. And second of all, do you see these petals? Oh yes, it's another sort of a Peloria trait. It's not a complete trait in the sense that they don't have the color of the lip. But do you see the shape? It's a mutation. The um, petals should have been nice and round and flared on Ascacendas. They're usually identical or very, very similar to the sepals. This one isn't, and I'm pretty sure um, it might be special to somebody because of this trait. Also, I'm not a fan of the colors. This is a really nice burgundy on the spots. The pattern is spotted, you know, it's nice. I'm not a fan of it. Um, and also the colors, the background, yeah, it's pretty. It's just not my favorite. Now, I'm not sure I kind of dislike this orchid because I'm disappointed that I don't have an orange Vanda and I lived for a year with the knowledge that I had an orange Vanda, one of the most beautiful varieties of orange Vandas. So I don't know if it's that or I actually don't like this orchid. I'll give it until the end of the month when all of these flowers will open completely. Uh, P.S. it has no fragrance, none that I detected, but I'll uh, just uh, see what happens. So at the end of the month, when we'll recap the orchids in bloom, I'm gonna tell you if I'm going to include this in a giveaway as well because she actually is pretty um, and uh, she's absolutely healthy looks super good but I don't like it now I do have the orange Denisoniana and Jessica kindly got it for me found it for me but you know we had some issues with the orange Denisoniana we I actually purchased an orange Denisoniana turned out to be the cream one uh, which I really love I really I, I have the cream Denisoniana. It smells beautiful, it's magical. I'm not a fan of the color, it's a sort of green yellow. Anyway, so I do have the orange Vanda, theoretically at least, but I'm not sure it's orange. So yeah, that's why I'm a little, little sad. But it's okay. That saying, she will find a new home if I decide to put her in the giveaway. And let me know down below if you actually like any of these orchids, if you think I should include them in the giveaway. Uh, I'm sure the Vanda, somebody will like her. I'm not sure about the Aquini, the Catlia. If you think, you know, uh, it's it's not worth it. Let me know. Um, I think there is somebody for every orchid. So yeah, let me know if you if you would like them. Um, if you would participate in the giveaway and would like to adopt one of these orchids. Now speaking about mislabeled orchids, because this is clearly mislabeled, it's not the only orchid that I had mislabeled. So it's not about Catacetum 2 or anything. I purchased orchids from him that were exactly what they were supposed to be, and I also purchased orchids from Schwerter that were not what the label said. In that case though, it was something I actually really liked, so I never returned it or anything. I have a problem with like returning orchids or like asking for refunds. It's a very healthy orchid. It's not what it's supposed to be, yes, but what can you do? You know, it's just an orchid. 
I might be the one losing here, but I don't like to go to the seller and say, hey, I want a refund. I will inform Catacetum too that it was uh, mislabeled just so he knows and he takes the appropriate action, but I don't usually ask for refunds and stuff of the sorts. Mislabeled orchids are a sadly common occurrence. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Hope you had a, an interesting time and you know the drill. If you've enjoyed uh, spending time with me, give this video a like. If you didn't, give this video a dislike. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Now, there is a Vanda right there, right behind that Dendrobium phalaenopsis. You can see the flower spike. It's pretty, it's nice, it's luscious, the Vanda is in tip-top condition, healthy. It's supposed to be a Sagdariana. If that orchid is mislabeled, I will be devastated. Sagdariana is yet again something that I've always wanted to have. And if that's mislabeled, I'm gonna be a very, very sad puppy and probably I'm gonna spend my sadness through a sort of a hole or something, maybe a shredder, maybe I don't know. So, for the sake of my wallet and my sanity, let us hope that that's a Sandariana. And P.S. I'm kidding here. Yeah, I'm a little sad, but you know, I'm exaggerating slightly for the purpose of this video. Uh, if you get a mislabeled orchid, that's fine. It's just an orchid. Yeah, it's a bit sad, but it's not the end of the world. So, I just wanted to add this just so uh, you know it's not that serious. This is slightly frustrating, but not very serious, okay? 